Coach Mike McCarthy is on the hot seat in Dallas despite winning the NFC East last year. But what is in store for this season? Let's take a look at their schedule. It is very difficult right off the top opening up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know something weird is going to happen in this game. When weird things happen, the Cowboys usually lose. But just when you're about to write off the Cowboys and be like, this team is done. They rally to win a game that they probably shouldn't be winning. I know a lot of people will be on the Bengals in this one, but I got the Cowboys here. But then, you know, it, it's still the Cowboys. They're going to lose on the road Monday night football against the New York Giants. Beating the Commanders before they take on the defending Super Bowl champions, the L.A. Rams, a loss. They got the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that they have dominated over their last three contests. They have smoked the Eagles. Much like JBL smoked the Blue Meanie. But the Blue Meanie's an Eagles fan. They rallied. I'm going to give them the L there. But a win over Detroit and Chicago. Even though the Chicago Bears have a new head coach, the Bears have played pretty well against the Dallas Cowboys over the last couple of years. Give me a Bears victory by week. Mike McCarthy revenge game. That's an L. But he's got, he's got an, an old favorite. The Minnesota Vikings, a team he's had a lot of success against. Give me a win there. You're not going to lose two games to the Giants. Indianapolis, though, this is one of the most interesting ones. Matt Ryan is the new quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. That's a good football team. I still think the Cowboys can take them. They will take the Houston Texans as well. And you see the Jags there, and you're like, well, there's an easy win. I don't think so. Doug Peterson done pretty well against the Cowboys in the past. I will take them there. And then the Eagles have a win against the Philadelphia Eagles before losing to the Titans, and then a win over the Washington Commanders. Best case scenario, the Cowboys don't miss Amari Cooper at all. Win the NFC East to be the first back-to-back -back champion in years. Worst case scenario, the pressure gets to be too much. They're right around 500, which is just where I have them at nine wins for the Dallas Cowboys. The Eagles are not messing around, adding A.J. Brown to a team that made the playoffs last season. What does that mean for this year? Well, let's take a look as they open up with the Detroit Lions. That to me is a win, even though a lot of people are optimistic about the Lions. I'm more optimistic about the Eagles. Should get a win over the Minnesota Vikings as well. Why not put them with a win over the Commanders? Jacksonville, Doug Peterson, revenge game. If this was down in Duval County, maybe, but I'm gonna go with an Eagles victory right there. Then they play on the road in Arizona. Arizona very tough in the early part of the season. I'm going to give the Cardinals that one. And there's a plus. The Eagles are going to be looking towards this game against the Dallas Cowboys, a team that has owned them over the last couple of games. I think the Eagles do it. I think they come out, they make a statement against the Dallas Cowboys right there, go into the bye week, feeling great about themselves, return against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they drop that one. But they rally the next week, wins over Houston, over the Washington Commanders, then a very tough game against the Indianapolis Colts. Frank Reich used to be on the staff. That's going to be an L, but they got the Green Bay Packers. I think they match up very well against the Green Bay Packers this season. Give them a win right there. The Tennessee Titans, despite some movement there, the A.J. Brown revenge game coming into play at this moment. But you know what? I'm going to go right there. I'm going to give them a loss right there. But a win over the Giants, and then you may or may not be aware of this. I'm a Chicago Bears fan. I'm still upset over the double doink. I could be very biased here. You should win that game. A game against the Dallas Cowboys on the road will have you splitting the series there, but beating the New Orleans Saints and then losing. Listen, the way I have the playoff bracket set up, the Eagles would not need to win this game. They're putting in all the backups and all that stuff because the best case scenario for me is that this Eagles offense takes another step under Jalen Hurts and unseats the Dallas Cowboys. Of course, the worst case is Hurts doesn't progress, but I don't see that. I got them at 11 and six winning the NFC East. Offensive mastermind Brian Dable takes over as head coach of the New York Giants. His job to find out if he can salvage Daniel Jones. Can he do it? Let's take a look at the schedule. It's not going to start off very easy on the road against the Tennessee Titans, a team that has gone through a lot of changes. Still, it's going to be a tough ask for them to go down to Tennessee and win that one, but it gets a little bit more favorable. You got the Carolina Panthers. That's the win. The Dallas Cowboys. This is a pretty good spot to face the Cowboys. I think they sneak out a win. And then this is an interesting one right here. The Chicago Bears. Obviously, they made the trade last season that sent Justin Fields to Chicago. 
I think they end up with a victory. I think the Giants will be ready for that one as well. Brian Dable did very well in the preseason against the Bears last year. Uh, the Green Bay game will be a loss, and the game against the Baltimore Ravens also will be a loss where it gets difficult to, to figure out. On the road against my friends down in Duval County, I think Doug Peterson gets this one here. I think Seattle also gets a win as the Giants kind of limp into the bye, but when they return, they have the Houston Texans. That should be a win for them. They got the Detroit Lions. Another game that'll serve as a barometer, a barometer situation. I will have them beating the Lions before losing to the Dallas Cowboys. There's no way they're sweeping the Cowboys. Then they have two or three where they involve the Washington Commanders. I have them losing at home, losing to the Philadelphia Eagles before winning on the road in Washington. These teams are weird. The NFC East is kind of a weird division, so they kind of split those games. They have the Minnesota Vikings game. That is going to be a loss. And then the Indianapolis Colts, that's a tough ask. That's a loss as well. But with the Philadelphia Eagles already clinching the NFC East, playing some of their backups, the Giants get an opportunity to go out, end the season on a high note. The best case scenario, Dable is the real deal. Danny Dimes is minted as a franchise quarterback. Hard to tell with the record right here because the worst case scenario is Daniel Jones is not the guy. If they win seven games, you're not going to be a top spot to get one of those quarterbacks coming out. But I think seven wins is a realistic outlook for the New York Giants. The Washington Commanders get a new name and a new quarterback. It is Carson Wentz on his last chance, or what we'd assume would be his last chance. He'll be a quarterback probably for the next 30 years. But let's take a look at what is going to happen this season. They open with the Jacksonville Jaguars, which you might look at. I'm sure a lot of Commanders fans are like, well, that's an easy win. You know what? I don't think so. I think Doug Peterson is going to have them ready to go. Detroit, that should be a win. But unfortunately, I think Dan Campbell and the Lions are going to take care of business there. And as a matter of fact, I think we're going to go through you know, tough matchup against the Eagles. You play well against the Dallas Cowboys a lot, but I have a loss right there. Tennessee, despite all the changes that have been made over there, I think that's a loss. I think Chicago would be one that you could look at and be like, yeah, we should be, we should be able to beat Chicago. But you know what? I'm going to have the Bears winning that one. Green Bay, it's going to be favored in that game. Indianapolis. Another favorite as well. So you, as, as you see right now, a tough start for the Washington Commanders and Carson Wentz. But the good news is you get a win against the Minnesota Vikings. But then the following week, a loss to the Eagles. Could they lose to the Texans? Yeah, I got them losing to the Texans. The Atlanta Falcons, however, there's a dub. The New York Giants, listen, there's a dub. Now you got the bye week. Now things are rolling. You play the Giants basically in back-to-back -back weeks, but unfortunately, I'm going to have the Giants taking that one in Washington. On the road in San Francisco is probably not going to work out. The Cleveland Browns, and then let's just close this out. Dallas Cowboys fighting for a playoff spot. I have that for a loss. Unfortunately, the best case scenario here is that Wentz looks like the guy who nearly won the MVP for Philadelphia back in, back in the day. Worst case, Wentz is the guy that we've seen every other season since then. As you see, 3-14, and 14, not, a, not an optimistic outlook, but hey, look, you can draft a quarterback next season. The Bears are heading in a new direction with coach Matt Eberflus. What does that mean for Justin Fields? Well, let's take a look. I know a lot of you might be aware. I'm a Bears fan. I'm going to try to be as impartial as possible, even as I'm picking them to beat San Francisco, a team they should have beaten last year. And Matt Eberflus shut down that offense as defensive coordinator of the Indianapolis Colts last season. But you know what? Listen, realistic rank. They're going to take a loss to the Green Bay Packers right there. But we'll beat Lovey Smith. Lovey Smith is 0-2 against the Bears. Okay, so I know a lot of people are excited for that game. No, no, no. They've handled them. But against the New York Giants on the road, I'm going to take a loss right there. A loss to the Minnesota Vikings on the road. I don't like putting it up there, but I got to be realistic. Win over the Washington Commanders. A game against Mac Jones. Justin Fields, Mac Jones should be a lot of fun. On the road at Foxborough, how about a loss? The Bears have played very well, though, against the Dallas Cowboys in recent years. I'm going to take a win there. Take a win over the Miami Dolphins as well. I think that should be a good, pretty good matchup. And then, you know what? I know Detroit's going to be a lot better this season. I don't know that it's always going to translate into wins. I'll give the Lions the win there as the Bears take the loss. But then you come back. You play the Atlanta Falcons, win. Tough road game against the New York Jets, but I think that's a win. 
what do we do against the Green Bay Packers? Is it possible that the Bears actually beat the Packers this season? I think so. They played them very well last year. A couple of, couple of things didn't go their way, and of course the Packers swept the series, but not this year. So give me a win right there. You go on a bye week. You want to avenge the double doink at some point. That's not going to be it. You're not going to beat the Buffalo Bills in a potential Super Bowl matchup, but wins against the Lions and the Vikings to close this out. Listen, best case scenario, the defense is pretty good. Fields develops, and this team makes a run into the playoffs like the Eagles did last year. Uh, worst case, Fields regresses. This team just doesn't win any games. But as you see, 10 wins for me for the Chicago Bears. Dan Campbell is in his second season as head coach of the Detroit Lions. They showed a lot of fight last season. Will it translate into wins? Let's take a look. They're opening up with a very tough game against the Philadelphia Eagles. I see them taking a loss in that one, but they have the Washington Commanders in week two, a team they should beat and will beat before going on the road to face the Minnesota Vikings and taking a loss, but an opportunity to level up against the Seattle Seahawks who are without Russell Wilson this year. So let's give them a win. Matt Patricia comes in with the, uh, or is playing host along with the uh, New England Patriots there. How about a loss in that one before going on the bye week? They return to play against the Dallas Cowboys. The last team they played in the playoffs. That's a loss. Actually, the last team they beat in the playoffs with the Dallas Cowboys. A loss as well to the Miami Dolphins. And then you got the Green Bay Packers. This, again, this is a tough thing. Give me the L right there. But you know what? The show, and you might not be aware of this, but I'm a Bears fan. I think you'll, I think you'll beat them. I think you'll get one win over the Bears this season, but you go on and play the New York Giants on the road. I think that is going to be a loss. I think playing the Buffalo Bills, let's be realistic. You're not beating the Bills. Jacksonville, I know a lot of Lions fans are looking at this one, circling that as a win. I don't think so. I think this is going to be a loss for the Detroit Lions, but the Minnesota Vikings, let's take a win right there. The New York Jets, a team that you're in a very similar situation with, how about a win right there on the road against the Carolina Panthers? I actually think the Carolina Panthers will take that one and then you close it out with two divisional games, the Bears and the Packers. Both of those should be losses. Look, the best case scenario, the intensity pays off. The Lions make a run towards the playoffs. Worst case scenario, Jared Goff's your quarterback. That's why you get five wins, but you know what? You would be able to address it in the draft. Devontae Adams was traded during the offseason and it shocked the world. Are the Packers going to be vulnerable this year? Well, let's take a look. They open up on the road against the Minnesota Vikings, but I don't care who plays wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. That's a win for the Packers. They play the Bears and uh, I'm a Bears fan. I got I to gotta be honest, so no, they're going to beat the Bears there. Tough game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think this is where you start to see where Devontae Adams' absence really starts to hurt them. Take a loss right there, but they will rebound to beat the New England Patriots. They will beat the New York Giants. They should not drop a game against the New York Jets. They got the Commanders. Then you got the Buffalo Bills. Again, a lot of people are looking at this as a potential Super Bowl matchup. I got the Bills in this one. They come back the following week. They got the Lions. Give me a win there. Give me a win. Mike McCarthy revenge game. I'm already giving that a win for the uh, Green Bay Packers. Tennessee Titans, again, a very tough game for them. I think they take that one, but now this, start, this starts a little bit of a tough stretch. The Philadelphia Eagles are going to be much improved this season. And then you got the Bears. You got my Bears. Can they split the season series? You know what? I think the Bears take this one. Heading into both teams' bye week, I think the Bears take that one. Maybe they're looking ahead to the Los Angeles Rams game, and the Rams are going to be traveling to Green Bay, a place where they played in the playoffs a couple of years ago. I say they knock off the defending champions. Aaron Rodgers still has a lot of fight in him, but because they just played a tough game, they go on the road to Miami. They lose that one, but then Aaron Rodgers tells everybody to relax. Wins over the Vikings and the Lions best case scenario and the most likely Rodgers doesn't miss a beat they win the NFC North going away worst case scenario Adams was a bigger deal than everybody thought but as you see 12 wins the NFC North is theirs for the Green Bay Packers the Minnesota Vikings hired former Rams assistant Kevin O'Connell to lead Kirk Cousins into the playoffs can he do it 
Let's take a look. Oh, they open up with the Green Bay Packers. That, unfortunately, will be a loss for them. They got the Philadelphia Eagles. This schedule is not working out in their favor. Back-to-back -back losses to open the season. But, hey, look, it opens up a little bit. You got the Detroit Lions. That should be a pretty, I don't want to say easy victory, but you know what I mean. Uh, but then they got the Saints. Saints loss, but against the Chicago Bears. I'll have them taking one game against the Chicago Bears, even though that pains me to say as a Bears fan. But they go on the road to face the Miami Dolphins right before the bye week. Give me a loss right there. But then they got the bye, an opportunity to regroup. O'Connell's got some familiarity going up against the Arizona Cardinals. So give me a win right there for the Vikings. But a loss against the Commanders, a loss against the Buffalo Bills. And then you got the Dallas Cowboys here. Another tough one, I gotta say, the Dallas Cowboys end up taking that one. But Thursday night game against the New England Patriots. Give me a win right there. Give me a win against the New York Jets. And now you're starting to think this team could take a little bit of a run. Like, okay, we're feeling good about ourselves. But you got the Lions. That's gonna be a loss. You got the Indianapolis Colts though. I see a win over the Colts. I see a win over the New York Giants. You're seven and eight. Can they make a run? Can they sneak into the playoffs? Well, unfortunately, they got a game against the Green Bay Packers and I have the Chicago Bears beating them in the season finale. Best case scenario, O'Connell is all that. The Vikings take the North. There is talent there. Worst case, they're just not as good as everybody seems to think. I know every year everybody acts like the Vikings are gonna make a run. I don't see it. I got them for seven wins. Matt Ryan is gone. That means it's up to Marcus Mariota or perhaps Desmond Ritter to lead this team. Can they do it? Let's take a look. This is going to be a tough schedule for the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not completely optimistic, especially opening with the New Orleans Saints. Then they have the defending world champions, the LA Rams, but they have to go on the road to play the Seattle Seahawks. Give me a loss there, but listen, the NFL is a nutty place. It is just crazy. It doesn't make sense. I'm going to give them a win over the Cleveland Browns before taking that loss against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and of no fault to Marcus Mariota. At some point, Desmond Ritter will probably be given an opportunity to see what he could do because this team will probably be playing for a top draft pick. I have them taking a loss against the San Francisco 49ers and again, a loss against the Cincinnati Bengals at home against Carolina. Carolina has actually played very well in Atlanta over the last couple of years. Give me a loss right there. The Chargers, again, fluky things happen in the NFL, but I think the Chargers will end up winning that one. But the Falcons have actually played very well in Carolina, so give me one of their wins there before they play host to the Chicago Bears. That is going to be a loss. The Washington Commanders, that is a winnable game. I still have them taking the loss right there. And a loss against the Pittsburgh Steelers before their late season bye week. And you know what? It's not going to get any easier after that. Four teams that will probably be competing for playoff bursts. Loss. Four losses to cost to, uh, to end the season. Listen, best case scenario, Mariota becomes the new Ryan Tannehill, the guy who replaced him in Tennessee. This team goes on a little bit of a run. Worst case is Matt Ryan was a lot better than we gave him credit for, and this team struggles. As you see, I'm taking the latter. I think this is going to be a tough year for the Atlanta Falcons. Matt Rule is under pressure after another disappointing season. Did the team do enough to compete this year? Well, let's take a look. Tough way to start the season. They got the Cleveland Browns, but a very winnable game on the road against the New York Giants. But again, I'm going to take, have them take on the loss there. They've got a pretty good opportunity to take out the Saints in this one. The Saints might be looking ahead to their week four matchup. So I'm going to take a win right there. The Arizona Cardinals, though, so tough in the beginning of the season. Lost there. I'm going to have them beating, though, the San Francisco 49ers. So they're okay. They're, they're feeling themselves a little bit on the road, facing the defending Super Bowl champions. That's going to be a loss. Then they play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a team that won the Super Bowl two years ago. A loss, but then you have the Falcons. It's going to be a win. Then they play the Cincinnati Bengals. Lost. Back-to-back -back losses is again, these teams play well on the road, not so well at home against each other in the division. That'll be tough. On the road, they go to Baltimore. I'm going to have them taking a loss there. Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos come to town. That is going to be a loss there. Then they take on their bye week. The Seattle Seahawks, again, very winnable game, but being on the road in Seattle, I'm going to have them taking the loss there. A loss 
against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but at home against the Detroit Lions, maybe they can start a run and finish strong as they get a win. But look at this ending. Got to finish with the Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints. This is very tough for me. I have them for four wins. You know, the best case scenario, CMC is healthy. Darnold takes charge and the Panthers just make a run. But unfortunately, I don't see it for the for the Carolina Panthers. If I could base this on their social media team, I would have them being undefeated. But unfortunately, I don't see a lot of optimism for the Carolina Panthers. Four wins is what I have them. The Saints struggled the last time Sean Payton stepped away. They went from a team that went 13 and three to a team that finished seven and nine. Can history repeat itself? Well, let's take a look. They open up on the road against the Atlanta Falcons. Very winnable game. We'll give them a win right there. Tampa Bay. I don't know what it is. Actually, I do know what it is. It's the defense. They dominate Tom Brady. I'm going to keep that going before they take a loss against the Carolina Panthers, but wins over the Minnesota Vikings. A win over the visiting Seattle Seahawks. Then a very tough game against the Cincinnati Bengals, a team that reached the Super Bowl last year. I'm going to say that's a loss. They got the Arizona Cardinals on the road. Obviously, Arizona is so tough at home early in the season. So give the birds a win there and going to Las Vegas is not going to be easy this year, especially with Josh McDaniels as the head coach, but wins against the Baltimore Ravens before a loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, a loss to the defending champion LA Rams. I'm going to even say they got a loss here against the San Francisco 49ers, but they're in luck because they got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers one more time before they go on their bye week. Again, Tampa Bay might break this streak at some point, but I'm not going to pick it. Then you got a win against the Atlanta Falcons. You got the Cleveland Browns right here. I'm going to go loss. I'm going to go loss against the Philadelphia Eagles before they close out with a win over the Carolina Panthers to finish eight and nine. Here's the best case scenario. Jameis Winston develops and this team doesn't miss a single beat. But the worst case scenario for me is the one that I talked about right up here off the top. Sean Payton very good at his job. There's a thing about, hey, listen, the system hasn't changed, but you know what? When you change the coach like that in a very tough division, even though they defeated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and have that mastery of it, I don't see the New Orleans Saints getting into the playoffs. Tom Brady is back. Does that mean the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the team to beat in the NFC once again? Well, let's take a look. They open up on the road against the Dallas Cowboys. This game is going to get weird. This game is going to be unusual. Something crazy is going to happen, but I still have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking the victory there. But then they got the Saints. They cannot beat the Saints. And here where it's sandwiched in between the Cowboys and the Packers, I'm going to have them taking the loss once again before beating the Green Bay Packers, beating the Kansas City Chiefs and could they lose to the Atlanta Falcons after this tough row? Well, they probably could, but even then that's too much to ask. So I have them beating the Atlanta Falcons as well. They got the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road. That's where I have them taking a loss before coming back to take on the Carolina Panthers with a win right there. The Baltimore Ravens, obviously a very good team win right there. And you got the Ravens and the Rams. You got them back to back, but I think Tom Brady has the ability to focus. I'm going to have wins right there four consecutive wins before their bye week and then they return to play the cleveland browns the cleveland browns expected to contend for the afc north possibly the super bowl i'm gonna have them taking a loss and then once again i don't know how to explain it i do know how to explain it it's the defense i'm gonna have the saints beating them there but then a tough game against the san francisco 49ers another team in contention in the nfc win a win over the Cincinnati Bengals as well, even though the Bengals are going to be very good, but I have that one going in the Buccaneers' favor. On the road against the Arizona Cardinals late in the year, win. And they're not dropping the last two against the Carolina Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons. To me, the best case scenario, Tom Brady is the man, and they destroy everybody again. Well, not New Orleans, but they destroy everybody else. Worst case scenario, Tom Brady should have stayed retired, but I have them at 13-4 and four and being the number one seed in the NFC. The Arizona Cardinals once again faded down the stretch last season, but you know what? They still made the playoffs. What's in store for this year? Let's take a look. Tough game to open up against the Kansas City Chiefs, but they're with without Tyreek Hill. Give me a win. 
for the Arizona Cardinals right there, but they got a tough game against the Las Vegas Raiders. Josh McDaniels is the new coach there. Devontae Adams is there in Las Vegas. That's going to be a loss, but I'll give the Arizona Cardinals the benefit of the doubt. A win over the Super Bowl champs. A win over the Carolina Panthers. A win over the Philadelphia Eagles. This is very much on brand for the Arizona Cardinals. On the road, Seattle win. They're going to play the New Orleans Saints win. I'll be on total access talking them up like, oh, this is a good team. They're 6-1. and one. But you know what? Here come the losses. One on the road against the Minnesota Vikings. One at home against the Seattle Seahawks. They got the Rams on the road. SoFi Stadium. That's an easy one to call a loss. San Francisco, this is, this is the make or break it part of their season. They're going to take a loss there. And just when you're ready to write off the Arizona Cardinals, they do something you don't expect them to do. They win a tough game. I'm going to have them beating the Los Angeles Chargers to improve to 7-5 and five before their bye week. But then they return. They got the New England Patriots. That is going to be a loss. Russell Wilson. That is going to be a loss. Oh, I said loss, sir. Against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Give me a loss right there before they beat the Atlanta Falcons, they're 8-8. Eight eight. Could they make the playoffs? But with the playoffs on the line, on the road in San Francisco, I'm going to have them taking a loss. Listen, the best case scenario, the, Car the Cardinals rally, put it all together. Kyler Murray becomes an MVP candidate once again. Worst case, and what I'm predicting here, we've seen this all too often. This is an all too familiar movie for me. Give me the Cardinals with eight wins. The Los Angeles Rams are your defending Super Bowl champions, and they look to become the first repeat champion in nearly 20 years. What has it been? It's been so long. What is going to happen this year? Let's take a look. They open up with the Buffalo Bills. Kyle Brandt and everybody on Good Morning Football will be calling this a Super Bowl preview. Who wins this one? Give me the Rams and a victory over the Buffalo Bills. Give me a Rams and a victory over the Atlanta Falcons. An easy call right there. The Arizona Cardinals obviously play very well at the beginning part of the season. I'm going to have a loss there. The 49ers get a little revenge for the NFC Championship game right there, but then they have the Dallas Cowboys coming to SoFi Stadium. To me, I don't see the Rams dropping that one against the Cowboys. And then it's the Carolina Panthers right before the bye week. Give me a win. So the defending champions, four wins heading into the bye week. They play host to the San Francisco 49ers, and I say play host loosely because the 49ers travel very well, but you know what? Give me a win right there. They play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think that's a loss for them. And then they play the Arizona Cardinals once again. That's going to be a win. The New Orleans Saints is a very tough one. To go on the road and win in New Orleans is not an easy feat, but I think they do it there. I think they end up losing this one, however, to the Kansas City Chiefs before coming back to beat the Seattle Seahawks. They'll play the Raiders, and again, a team that travels very well, especially in Los Angeles. I'm going to have them beating the Raiders before they lose on the road against the Green Bay Packers in a rematch of the NFC Divisional Playoff game from a couple of years ago. Then they see a familiar face. Russell Wilson comes to town with the Denver Broncos. Like the Rams take care of them in the Battle of Los Angeles. Give me the Chargers before they close it out with a win on the road against the Seattle Seahawks. Listen, the best case scenario, the additions of Allen Robinson and Bobby Wagner make this team even better. Uh, the worst case is that a Super Bowl hangover spills into another season, claims another team, but 11 wins gets them into the playoffs and wins the NFC West. Who is going to be the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers? It feels like Trey Lance at this point. Will that be enough for them to get back to the playoffs? Let's take a look, and I'll just throw this out of the way. There's going to be no 3-13 and 13 prediction, and even though I'm a Chicago Bears fan, and this will come off as very biased, I say the Bears win that game. The Bears should have won that game last year. Improved defense. Give me Justin Fields over Trey Lance or Jimmy Garoppolo or whoever it is, Joe Montana. Bring out Steve Young. I don't care. The Bears win that game. But they beat uh, the Seattle Seahawks before losing to the Denver Broncos. A win over the defending champions, the uh, LA Rams, but there's quirky things that happen in the season. I see them taking a loss on the road in Carolina after beating the Rams. There's going to be a little bit of a letdown, but look, you got, you got the Atlanta Falcons right there. That should be a win, but tough games against the Chiefs and against the Rams leave you under 500 heading into the bye week, but the good news is very favorable matchup. Even though the LA Chargers are a very good team, you guys are going to win that game. A win 
over the birds. New Orleans, I'll give you guys a win at home on that one too. But then the Mike McDaniel revenge game, that's going to be a loss. Going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that also should be a loss, but some very winnable games down the stretch here, as you will see. The Seattle Seahawks, the Washington Commanders, the Las Vegas Raiders. This is going to be a very interesting game. I think the, the Raiders are going to be very good this year. Give me a win over the Arizona Cardinals. Here's the best case scenario. Trey Lance is this year's Joe Burrow, and the 49ers head back to the Super Bowl. That could happen. But the worst case is Lance isn't even Jimmy Garoppolo, and it all just comes crashing around them, and it doesn't work out for anybody. But as you see right here, nine wins for the San Francisco 49ers. I know you like it better when I pick you guys to win three games because that's when you go to the Super Bowl. But I got to keep it real. You're going to win nine games and make the playoffs. Russell Wilson is no longer the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks. As a matter of fact, our stage manager is like, who's the quarterback? Who's it going to be? We expect it to be Drew Locke. And what does that all mean? Well, let's take a look. They're going to open up against Russell Wilson. Like, you got to love the schedule makers sometimes. What an amazing game to start the season, although that will be a loss for the Seahawks. Probably a loss on the road the following week at San Francisco. You got a game at home against the Atlanta Falcons. Get you your first win of the year. Detroit on the road, a very winnable game, but give me the Lions there. I'm going to take New Orleans on the road in this one as well. The Arizona Cardinals played very well at the beginning of the season, so I'm going to go with the Cardinals there. The L.A. Chargers, a loss, but playing host to the New York Giants. Win there, win against the Cardinals. you got two in a row. You're feeling pretty good about yourself, but you got to play host to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That is going to be a loss as you head off to the bye week. Your return, it's not going to get any easier, at least not in the first two weeks. Las Vegas is going to take that one. The L.A. Rams, the defending Super Bowl champions, a loss. But here you go. Win right there against the Carolina Panthers before losing to the San Francisco 49ers. You go on the road to face the Kansas City Chiefs. That is going to be a loss. Then you got the New York Jets. There's an opportunity for a win. Then you close it off with a loss. And here's the thing about the Seattle Seahawks. We talk about the quarterback situation, the best case scenario. And I'm talking about the best case. Drew Locke is the man. If you watch what he does, he excels at throwing the ball down the field. He's got Tyler Lockett. He's got DK Metcalf. There is something there. But the worst case scenario is that Russell Wilson was pretty good. Drew Locke isn't. And as I look at it right now and I look at the schedule, to me, I see five wins for the Seattle Seahawks as they go looking for a quarterback in next year's NFL Draft. The Buffalo Bills played in perhaps the greatest playoff game in NFL history. You know what? I'll just say it. It was the greatest playoff game, but they came up just short of reaching the AFC Championship game. How will that affect them heading into this season? Let's take a look. The schedule, not easy. This first week, opening up on the road against the LA Rams. I know it's tough to give the Bills a loss there. Probably the toughest game for me to predict, but I'm going to go with the Rams. But even though this is a tough slate of games, I think it works out very well for the Bills. Who's going to be ready for this matchup against the Tennessee Titans, against the Miami Dolphins? I'll even give them a win against the Baltimore Ravens. The Steelers game could definitely be a trap because this is the week before they go on the road to face the Kansas City Chiefs, the place where they lost in the playoffs last season. But you know what? Give me a win heading into the bye week. And even though things are going well, I see no reason for them to slow down. Give me a win over the Green Bay Packers. They got the New York Jets and Minnesota Vikings in back-to-back -back weeks. Those are two very winnable games before another tough contest against the Cleveland Browns, a team a lot of people believe are going to be very good this season. But you know what? I got confidence in the Bills. Give me a win over the Browns. Give me a win, of course, over the Lions. Now, recently, the Bills have had success against the New England Patriots, but Bill Belichick still got some tricks up his sleeve, so I'm going to give the Bills a loss there before they rally. Wins over the Jets, sweeping the series with the Miami Dolphins. The Chicago Bears, potential Super Bowl. Okay, maybe not. I'm a Bears fan. You know, let's give me that moment to at least think about that, but I'll give them a win there. Very tough contest in Week 17 against the Cincinnati Bengals for me. I have Joe Burrow and company taking that one. And then if you look at the record right now, they're 13 and three will have wrapped up the number one seed. So with not much to play for a weird sweep 
for the New England Patriots. Now, the best case scenario here is the Bills continue to climb the ladder like Adam Page's three-year journey to the AEW title, and the Bills go on and get to the Super Bowl. The worst case is that the Bills peaked last season. But as you can tell, I do not see that happening. I've got them taking the number one seed in the AFC. The Miami Dolphins brought in coach Mike McDaniel and wide receiver Tyreek Hill to help develop quarterback Tua Tungabayaloa. Are the Dolphins going to the playoffs? Let's take a look. It is going to be a tough stretch to open the year. The Dolphins have always played the New England Patriots very well in Miami, but when I see rookie coach going up against Bill Belichick, unfortunately, I have to think there's going to be a loss there. A loss against the Baltimore Ravens. All right, we're starting to scuffle along a little bit. The Buffalo Bills. This is an impossible stretch. I know that there's a lot of optimism with the Dolphins, but I have them starting with four losses before they rally to beat the New York Jets. Then they have the Minnesota Vikings, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Detroit Lions to level up there at four and four. Then another tough game against the Chicago Bears. I think the Bears are going to be much improved this season. I'm going to have them taking a loss right there, but the following week, they get the win over the Cleveland Browns, then they head into the bye week. Once again, they're leveled up. They open up the second half of their season with a win over the Houston Texans. They got the San Francisco 49ers in a Mike McDaniel revenge game. That I have as a win before going on the road with two back-to-back -to -back tough games against teams that obvious playoff contenders. So I'll have a loss against the Los Angeles Chargers, a loss against the Buffalo Bills, then a tough game against the Green Bay Packers, them coming down to South Beach. Green Bay will be playing a tough game in week 15, so give me a win right there for them. Going up against the New England Patriots, now you're starting to feel yourself. You're closing out there, three consecutive wins. So as you can see, the best case scenario for these guys, Tua becomes the guy that we all remember from Alabama and the Dolphins reach the playoffs. Worst case, Two is the guy that we saw the last couple of years in Miami, but I have them slated for 10 wins. The Patriots reached the playoffs last season with rookie quarterback Mac Jones, but how big is the loss of Josh McDaniels? Well, let's take a look at the schedule. They open up on the road in Miami, a place where the Patriots have traditionally struggled, but anytime you have Bill Belichick going up against a rookie head coach, I'm going to take the Patriots. Week two, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers, despite their quarterback issues, are going to be very tough this season. So I'll have them taking a loss there. Their old rivals, the Baltimore Ravens, that is a loss to me. And then going up on the road at Green Bay, you know what? That's another loss. This is going to be a tough stretch for the New England Patriots, but it does kind of ease up a little bit. You got the Detroit Lions, a game that they should win before going on the road to take on the Cleveland Browns. I got a loss there, but rallying to beat the Chicago Bears at home there. The New York Jets, again, a very tough team. It'd be interesting to see how they play this season. I'm going to say the Jets take that one. The Indianapolis Colts coming to New England once again. I'm going to have a win before you go on the bye week. You come back in week 11 against the New York Jets. That should be a win. You go on the road, you're facing the Minnesota Vikings, who've got a rookie coach themselves, but I feel a little bit confident in Minnesota having their situation settled that late in the season. Beating the Buffalo Bills, even though they, it's, we've kind of changed the uh, hierarchy in the AFC East, I have you beating the Bills, I have you beating the Arizona Cardinals before losing on the road in Las Vegas. Now you have the Cincinnati Bengals on to Cincinnati, as they say, even though Cincinnati will be coming to Foxborough. I have you taking a win right there against the Cincinnati Bengals, but losing to the Miami Dolphins. And then in week 18, here comes a quirky sweep of the Buffalo Bills. Give me a win for them. Now the best case scenario, the Patriots, as they've done for generations, just turn to the next man and keep on winning. Worst case, having Joe Judge and Matt Patricia fall in plays. Well, not quite what we're expecting. I have them right there at nine and eight. The Jets loaded up on offense to help second year quarterback Zach Wilson. Is it enough for this team to take flight? All right, that's terrible. But let's take a look at the schedule. It starts off very difficult. I have a loss against the Baltimore Ravens, one of the top teams in the AFC as well as the Cleveland Browns. Then you got the defending AFC champions, the Cincinnati Bengals. But here's the thing. They've actually played well against the Bengals. 
This Jets team does have some talent. You look at their first nine games, they can start off 0-9, but I think there's going to be a couple of victories here, surprises over some established AFC teams, but I will have them taking a loss to the Miami Dolphins. Week 6 at Green Bay, that's easy to call. That's going to be a loss. They got the Denver Broncos on the road with Russell Wilson. That's going to be a loss, but I have them beating the New England Patriots at home. Give the Jets some credit right there before they take a loss and head out to the bye week. As they return, they're going up to Foxborough to face that team they beat earlier in the season. I'm going to have them taking a loss. Week 12, Chicago Bears, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, two of the top quarterbacks from last year's draft. But I'm going to have the Bears coming out on top of that one. Minnesota, I'm going to have them taking that one. Buffalo, let's uh, come on. Detroit, there's an opportunity right there to pick up a win but I'm going to have them taking a loss. I'm going to have them taking a loss against the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Seattle Seahawks, and then closing it out with another loss against the Miami Dolphins. This is going to be a very tough year for the Jets. The best case scenario, Zach Wilson becomes this year's version of Joe Burrow, and the Jets overcome that tough schedule to make a miracle run. Uh, the worst case is uh, Zach Wilson is this year's version of Josh Rosen. That's not fair. But it's the way that I see it. Tough season for the New York Jets. The Baltimore Ravens were one of the top teams in the AFC last year before injuries got the best of them. Should they be considered one of those top teams again this year? Well, let's take a look at the schedule. It opens up pretty favorably. Winnable game against the New York Jets, a winnable game against the Miami Dolphins. First year coach Mike McDaniel against John Harbaugh. I will take the Ravens in that one. They got the New England Patriots, a team that they've had some epic battles with over the years. I got a win there as they go and they play host to the Buffalo Bills, one of the premier games in the early part of the season. I have the Bills taking that one. That could go either way. This was a tough one for me to predict, but the following week, they rally to beat the Cincinnati Bengals, then go on the road to play the New York Giants. I'm going to have them taking a win right there. Cleveland, oh, this is a tough one. Again, I'm going to have them taking a win before they go on the road, take a loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, then they face another NFC South team, taking a loss right there, heading into the bye week, six and three. But then they got the Carolina Panthers, a very winnable game. Give me a win over the Panthers. Oh, sorry, that doesn't need to be highlighted. It's just a win over the Panthers, nothing special. A win over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Then they got the Pittsburgh, oh no, wait, hold, the, the Denver Broncos. Another win, then they got the Pittsburgh Steelers. And listen, I think every year, there's always gonna be one tie. Why not Steelers Ravens? So I'm gonna have a tie right there before they lose to the Cleveland Browns. Week 16, they will be playing the Atlanta Falcons. Right there, 10-4-1 on the cusp of the playoffs, but then go back to back with losses to the Steelers and to the Bengals. Now, the best case scenario, Lamar Jackson is back in his MVP form. The team plays healthy this year, and they are back in the playoffs. Worst case scenario, they miss Hollywood Brown, Wink Martindale. But as you see, 10 wins should be enough to get them into the playoffs this season. The Bengals shocked the world last season, made it all the way to the Super Bowl, and were just a few plays away from winning their first NFL title. Can they avoid the Super Bowl hangover? Let's take a look. This schedule, not easy to start. I will have them beating the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's still a lot to prove for Joe Burrow. He's going to come out fired up. But then you're on the road against the Dallas Cowboys, on the road against the New York Jets, a team that weirdly has given them fits before. Weird things happen in the NFL. One and two, not where you want to see them start, but they got to win over Miami. They're going up against the Baltimore Ravens. I don't know if, they, if you've heard. Joe Burrow's been talking a lot about the Baltimore Ravens. I think they're, the Ravens are going to be ready for that one. Take a loss right there, but they go on the road to New Orleans where I see them having some success, also having some success against the Atlanta Falcons. The Cleveland games are going to be very difficult to look at, very difficult to predict. But I think with these rivalries, I'm going to have the, the Browns winning at home the following week. They got the Carolina Panthers. They're five and four heading into the bye. Feeling pretty good. Very similar to last year. They were, you know, they were a, they were a slow, slow building team. Now in week 11, they're on the road against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know what? Give me the sweep over the Steelers. Then you have the Tennessee Titans, a team they knocked off during their playoff run last season. Give me a win. The Kansas City Chiefs, a team they did beat in the playoffs as well. 
give me a win right there and a win over the Cleveland Browns to split the season series going up against Tom Brady the following week. However, I see that as a loss on the road against New England. I'm going to have them taking a loss right here because they're looking ahead to the Buffalo Bills where they will win. And then Joe Burrow, who doesn't seem to like the Baltimore Ravens at all. I have them winning right there as well. The best case here for the Bengals. They're even better with all the improvements on the offensive line and everything they've added. The worst case is that their run was a fluke. Uh, they regress a little bit with everybody gunning for them. But obviously, I do not see it that way. I have the Bengals with 11 wins and taking the AFC North. The Cleveland Browns made a big move this offseason when they brought in Deshaun Watson to be their starting quarterback. How is that going to affect them this year? Well, let's take a look at the schedule. The good news is they open up with some very winnable games. Number one, going up against the Carolina Panthers on the road in week one. I'm going to have them taking a win right there. They got the New York Jets the following week. That is a win for me before they have the Pittsburgh Steelers which to me will be another win. But this is what happens in the NFL. You have some big wins the following week. You don't play up to the level of your opponent or play down to them, as a matter of fact. Taking a loss on the road against the Atlanta Falcons, kind of unexpected. And then the following week, as they're playing host to the LA Chargers, I'm going to have them taking a loss right there. But the following week, they got the New England Patriots coming to town. Give me a win for the Browns right there before they lose. To the Baltimore Ravens and then right before the bye week it is time for the Cincinnati Bengals at home. Give me a win. You go to the bye week. You're five and three. You're feeling pretty good about this team. But then they open up against the Miami Dolphins. To me that's a loss. You're on the road against the Buffalo Bills loss. You got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming to town though. I actually think that this plays out favorably for the Browns. So give me a win for them right there. A win or excuse me a loss to the Houston Texans. Listen, the Texans have got to beat somebody. Coming off a huge win right here. Again, just playing down to the level of the competition. And then against the Cincinnati Bengals, there will be a loss, oh, excuse me, a loss. But a win right there against the Baltimore Ravens. A win against the Saints. A win against the Commanders. And then in week 18 against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Unfortunately, I have them taking a loss right there to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now the best case scenario, Watson plays amazing and last year is forgotten as they make it to the playoffs. The worst case is that you know what the Browns may be tinkered too much with this team and they struggle for a second consecutive year. Nine and eight is not necessarily struggling but not enough to get them into the playoffs. The Pittsburgh Steelers will be without quarterback Ben Roethlisberger for the first time in generations. But Mike Tomlin has never finished below 500. Is this the year? Well, let's take a look. It opens up with a very tough game against the Cincinnati Bengals on the road. I've got the defending AFC champions winning that one. But then the Steelers come back in week two. They beat the New England Patriots before taking a loss to the Cleveland Browns, taking a loss to the New York Jets. Could it be taking a loss to the Buffalo Bills starting off one and four? If Mitch Trubisky is the starting quarterback, he wouldn't be after a one and four start. But then you got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming to town. I think there's an opportunity to win that game before losing to the Miami Dolphins and in a game against the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that I like a lot this season. I'm going to have the Pittsburgh Steelers taking that one. Now, after the bye week, they have the New Orleans Saints coming to town. I'm going to have that as a win for the Steelers. They're going to lose. They're going to end up losing the season series to the Cincinnati Bengals, a tough game against the Indianapolis Colts. I'm going to have that going as a loss, but the good news is you got the Atlanta Falcons. That is a very winnable game. Then you got your rivals, the Baltimore Ravens. And you know what? It just feels like the kind of game that will end up in a tie. Ravens, Steelers, tie. It almost makes way too much sense. They got the Carolina Panthers. For me, this is a win. You got the Las Vegas Raiders. This is going to be a loss. And uh oh, we're getting very dangerously close to this team not finishing at 500. But you know what? Wins over the Ravens, wins over the Browns. And there you have it. Mike Tomlin finishes 8 8 and 1. The best case scenario the Steelers, who made the playoffs last year with Big Ben playing with a new quarterback, actually played a little bit better. Worst case is that the bottom falls out. This team is not reminiscent of Mike Tomlin at all. But I don't see that as the case. I have them right there at 500. The Houston Texans made a change at the head coaching position. Lovey Smith is back and leading this team. Can he recapture the magic 
that he had in Chicago? Well, let's take a look. It is a very tough schedule. They open up with the Indianapolis Colts. I got the division rivals taking that one. Then it's up against Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. That is going to be a loss. Now, I know a lot of people are excited about Lovey Smith returning to Soldier Field. He's done it before. He's actually 0-2 against the Bears when he was a coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So give me the Bears in that one. But you have the L.A. Chargers, a team that you upset last year. I have them doing it again before they lose on the road in Jacksonville heading into the bye. Then it's a return to Las Vegas. We're just going back to Las Vegas. That is going to be a loss for me. Tennessee, one of the better teams in the AFC. That's a loss. The Philadelphia Eagles. All right, this is starting again. Okay, that's a loss. The New York Giants, a very winnable game right there. I have the Giants taking that one. In week 11, however, the Washington Commanders are coming to town. I have the Houston Texans taking that one. And then it's up on the road against the Miami Dolphins. Give me a loss there, but a win over the Cleveland Browns in a possible Deshaun Watson revenge game. The Dallas Cowboys, well, unfortunately, that's going to be a loss. Kansas City Chiefs, one of the best teams in the AFC. Tennessee, again, on the road at Tennessee is always going to be very tough. Then our friends down in Duval County come to Houston, but you know what? I've got the Jacksonville Jaguars winning that one and the Indianapolis Colts finishing off the season, beating the Texans. And here's the thing. The best case scenario is that Lovey works his magic again. Davis Mills turns out to be the real deal and the Texans are competitive. That could still happen with the three and 14 record. The worst case, you know what? This roster still needs a lot of work and we get more of the Tampa Bay Lovey than the Chicago Lovey. And as you see in three and 14 is the record that I have for the Houston Texans. The Colts have been struggling to find a quarterback ever since Andrew Luck retired, and it feels, though, that they found their guy with Matt Ryan. Is he the missing piece to get them back to the playoffs? Well, let's take a look. It is a very favorable schedule to open up the year. You got the Houston Texans. Even though it's on the road, that's a win. Okay, listen, I know that the Colts have struggled in Jacksonville, I understand that. So even though I'm gonna have them taking a win there, it's a new team, it's a new quarterback. I think they'll end up winning this time, even though they haven't won there in like 85 years or whatever it is. But against the Kansas City Chiefs, that to me is a loss. Against the Titans, that to me is gonna be a loss. And of course, the Denver Broncos with Russell Wilson at the controls, I have the Broncos winning that one. Week six against the Jacksonville Jaguars, could they get a little revenge? No, 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 you level up. At three and three, you got the Tennessee Titans on the road. They actually, the Colts weirdly play well in Tennessee. You know, these divisional games get a little strange. That, that kind of stuff happens. A win over the Houston, or excuse me, over the Washington Commanders. Then it's on to the New England Patriots where I have them losing and then losing on the road the following week against the Las Vegas Raiders. And even though they're playing the Philadelphia Eagles, that's a win in a Frank Reich revenge game, so to speak. The Pittsburgh Steelers give me a win right there. At the Dallas Cowboys, that is going to be a loss for me. They go on to the bye week. They return. They're on the road to play the Minnesota Vikings. That, to me, is also a loss. Week 16, pivotal game at home against the L.A. Chargers. This is a must-win game for the Colts, but I like this Chargers team a little bit too much. But still, there's an opportunity here on the road against the New York Giants at home against the Houston Texans. Two wins give them up, gets them up to nine. Now, here's the best case scenario. Matty Ice rides to the rescue and plays some excellent football to get the Colts back to the playoffs. The worst case is that Ryan isn't the answer. And the Colts fall just short again, but nine and eight, it's a pretty good record in this AFC. What's up, Duval? Doug Peterson is back in the NFL, and this time he's tasked with getting the most out of Trevor Lawrence, all those receivers, and getting Duval back into the playoffs and they open up the season with the Washington Commanders, which to me is a win. And even though you've done very well at home against the Indianapolis Colts, we hear all about it last year. You kept them out of the playoffs. At some point, that streak is going to end. It ends this season. Then they take a loss against the LA Chargers. Another tough game, the Doug Peterson revenge game. I got to give them a loss on that one. But they have the Houston Texans coming to town. Give me a win right there on the road against Indianapolis. That's a tough one. They do have the Giants coming to town with Brian Dable, Daniel Jones, but you know what? Give me a win for my friends down there in Duval. Give me a loss though, unfortunately, against Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. They got the Las Vegas Raiders. Here's a tough stretch against that AFC West. 
Three consecutive losses right there heading into the bye, but then things can start to turn around just a little bit after this loss to the, oh, sorry, a loss to the Baltimore Ravens, but a win against Detroit, a loss here, but I have them beating the Dallas Cowboys. I don't believe in Mike McCarthy and that team, not completely. I have them beating the Jets. Zach Wilson against Trevor Lawrence. I think that's an opportunity for the Jags to make a statement on the road. Have them beating the Houston Texans before losing against the Tennessee Titans. And here's the thing, best case scenario, Peterson is the man to get the most out of Trevor, the guy that we've been waiting for ever since his freshman year at Clemson. The worst case is they don't show any improvement at all. But here's the thing, seven wins would be a very good would be a very good season for the Jacksonville Jaguars as they head into 2023, which is the year we expect them to take off. The Tennessee Titans have made some major changes heading into this year. A.J. Brown is gone. They drafted their heir apparent at quarterback. Will they make it back to the playoffs this season? Well, let's take a look. Week one, favorable matchup against the New York Giants. Give me a win right there, but then you got to go on to the road. Play the Buffalo Bills, the team I think of it's going to be the top team in the AFC. That is going to be a loss, but a couple of winnable games here. The Raiders coming across the country. You got on the road against the Indianapolis Colts, a place where they play very well. You got the Washington Commanders. That should be a win. You head into the bye week 4-1, and one, feeling pretty good about yourselves. You're playing host to the Colts, though, when you return. And again, Indianapolis actually plays well in Tennessee. So give me a loss there. Give me a win over the Houston Texans before this tough slate of games that includes the Chiefs, the Broncos, the Packers, the Bengals, they did you know, the Eagles, they did you no know favors. I say a loss against the Kansas City Chiefs, a team that you play very competitive with in the playoffs, a loss against Russell Wilson's squad, having Green Bay, this is on the road, and then the Cincinnati Bengals, a team that you defeated in the playoffs, but unfortunately, Joe Burrow has the revenge game. Actually, Joe Burrow, they, they beat you. Didn't mean to bring up old stuff. Sorry, guys. Philadelphia Eagles, though, that should be a win. A win over Jacksonville on the road in Los Angeles to take on the Chargers. I see that being a loss. Week 16, Houston Texans. Here's an opportunity to finish strong. A win over the Dallas Cowboys. And then finally, in week 18, a win over the Jacksonville Jaguars to finish 10 and 7. Here's the best case scenario. Traylon Burks is an adequate replacement for Brown. Derrick Henry plays a full season. And Tannehill keeps Malik Willis on the bench. The worst case would be if Tannehill regressed. You had to go to the rookie quarterback. But as you can tell, I do not see that. I see the Tennessee Titans winning the AFC South this year with a 10-7 record. In an offseason full of shocking moves, perhaps the biggest, was the Broncos bringing in quarterback Russell Wilson to lead this team. Will it get the Broncos back to the playoffs? Well, let's take a look because as you can see, Russell Wilson will be on the road with his new team to take on the Seattle Seahawks. And if these Bronco players even remotely like Russell Wilson, they'll be playing the game of their lives. So give me a win for the Broncos there. Give me a win the following week, even though there is a lot of emotion going on. They're not going to lose in week two to the Houston Texans. Give me a win there. Give me a win over the San Francisco 49ers. And then they're on the road against the Las Vegas Raiders. And to me, that is going to be a loss. But they rally the following week as they play host to the Indianapolis Colts. Take a win right there. They go on the road to face the L.A. Chargers, one of the better teams who also improved during the offseason. I have them losing there. But you know what? They have two very winnable games the following week against the Jets, against my friends down in Duval, Duval to be 6-2, and two, heading into the bye week. Then they are on the road against the Tennessee Titans. Once again, I have the Broncos winning that game. I don't see them getting swept by the Raiders this season, so give me a win there. A win against the Carolina Panthers. Then a very tough contest against the Baltimore Ravens, one of the top teams in the AFC. I'm going to have them taking a loss there, but here's the thing. I'm going to have them beating the Kansas City Chiefs. The first time they will have beaten the Chiefs since 2015. It's crazy. And then a win over the Arizona Cardinals. Week 16, they're on the road against the L.A. Rams, a team that Russell Wilson is very familiar with. But taking a loss, the Chiefs avenge an earlier loss with the win right there. But the Broncos 
close out the season with a win at home against the LA Chargers. Here's the best case scenario. Russell Wilson is the man and proves to be the missing piece for the Broncos this year. Obviously, the worst case would be that he doesn't play well, but obviously, I don't believe that. 12 and 5 for the Denver Broncos and winning the AFC West. The Kansas City Chiefs last season made it to their fourth consecutive title game. But can they get back without Tyreek Hill? Well, let's take a look. The schedule starts off pretty tough. They're on the road against the Arizona Cardinals, who traditionally play very well early in the season. I have them taking a loss. I have them taking a loss at home to the LA Chargers, who have actually have done well in Kansas City in, at times. Uh, but on the road against the Indianapolis Colts, I think they get right there before they go on the road, lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the team that beat them in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. But the Las Vegas Raiders come to town in week five. I have the Kansas City Chiefs taking a win right there. Then in week six, they play host to the Buffalo Bills, the team that they bested in the greatest playoff game I have ever seen in my life. But you know what? The revenge comes for Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills this time. The following week, they got the San Francisco 49ers, the team they beat in the Super Bowl. Give me a win right there. They're three and four heading into the bye week. Andy Reid dominates after the bye week. Give me a win there. Give me a win against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Then in week 11, you go on the road to play the LA Chargers. The Kansas City Chiefs do not lose in Los Angeles. They own LA, even when they're playing the Rams in the Coliseum, they own them. Then they play host to the Rams. And you know what? I have them winning that one. They're on the road against the Cincinnati Bengals, though. Have them taking a loss there. Have them taking a loss against the Denver Broncos. Tough road trip right there. Actually, they also have Houston. I'm going to have them beating the Houston Texans. Week 16 against the Seattle Seahawks. Give me a win right there. Give me a win against the Denver Broncos. Week 18, a win and in situation against the Las Vegas Raiders. And you know what? Give me the Raiders. So for the first time in years, the Kansas City Chiefs, despite winning 10 games, will not make the playoffs. You heard it here first. Go ahead and light me up in the comments there. I don't care. Josh McDaniels is back as a head coach. This time he is leading the Las Vegas Raiders. And oh, by the way, they have Devontae Adams. Does this make the Raiders the team to beat in the AFC? Well, let's take a look. They open up on the road in Los Angeles where they are still very popular. I have them beating the Chargers, going on the road, or excuse me, playing at home against the Arizona Cardinals, taking a win right there, but going on the road to face the Tennessee Titans where they will take their first loss of the season, but they come back home beat the Denver Broncos before going on the road again. This is all very confusing. Stay with me. But they take a loss right there, heading into their bye week. They're three and two, feeling pretty good again about themselves. They got the Houston Texans coming out of the bye week. That should be a win. They're going up against the New Orleans Saints on the road. A very tough game. I have them, I have them beating Dennis Allen, a former Raiders coach himself, on the road against Jacksonville. This is actually a tougher game than I think a lot of people will give them credit for but I still have them getting a win right there I have them beating the Indianapolis Colts at home before going on the road to face the Denver Broncos in week 11 they're going to take a loss right there week 12 against the Seattle Seahawks that should be a win but then they have a very tough stretch against the LA teams right here I have them losing against the LA Chargers which last season this was the game that knocked the Chargers out of the playoffs losing against the LA Rams on the road once again, but beating the New England Patriots. Week 16, they got the Steelers in the anniversary of the Immaculate Reception, taking a win right there, taking a win. And then even though the Raiders are pretty much assured a playoff spot going up against the Kansas City Chiefs, I have them beating the Chiefs. And this will be the second consecutive year that the Raiders have knocked off one of their AFC West foes and kept them out of the playoffs. So as you see, Derek Carr to me, who is already a good quarterback, becomes an elite quarterback with Devontae Adams. I have the Raiders winning 12 games and advancing on to the AFC playoffs. The Los Angeles Chargers were so close to making the playoffs last year, but can Justin Herbert overcome that 
and lead the team to the postseason in 2022. Let's take a look. They open up with the Las Vegas Raiders. And wait, hold on. Time out, everybody. Oh, wait, nope. Too soon. I'm sorry about that. But I have them losing against the Las Vegas Raiders at home. I know it's too soon for all these jokes, but a win over the Kansas City Chiefs, a win over the Jacksonville Jaguars and a team that beat them last year, the Houston Texans. I'm going to have the Chargers once again taking a very Chargers like loss against Lovey uh, Lovey Smith's ball club. A win though over the Cleveland Browns week six at home against the Denver Broncos who travel very well to Los Angeles, but I have the Chargers winning that one. I have the Chargers beating Seattle going five and two into the break and there's actually some favorable contests upcoming including the Atlanta Falcons bought a difficult one on the road against the San Francisco 49ers will result in a loss week 11 going up against the Kansas City Chiefs at home. You know, the Kansas City Chiefs never seem to lose in Los Angeles. They have dominated the matchup, not only with the Chargers, they've beaten the Rams in LA. They've been very good in Los Angeles, but week 12 on the road against Arizona. To me, that is gonna be a loss, but then they go to Las Vegas where they ended their season last year with the ill-fated timeout, and this would have probably been the better part to have that little joke there. Let's give them a win right there, a win over Mike McDaniel and the Dolphins. Week 15, Tennessee Titans. I think it's going to be a win for the Chargers. Week 16, this will probably make or break their playoff run. I have them beating the Indianapolis Colts. And then, and then in the Battle of Los Angeles, give me a win for the LA Chargers right there, but taking a loss on the road against the Denver Broncos in week 18. Here's the best case scenario. Herbert makes a claim as the best quarterback in the NFL, which he might do. 11 wins would be enough to get the Chargers into the playoffs this season, which is where I have them. So congratulations, no coin flips, no timeouts. The Chargers are gonna make the playoffs.